We started our series with a particular vision of technocracy that came from Thorsten Veblen. Veblen put the industrial engineer at the heart of his theory, which made a certain amount of sense because this was, after all, the industrial age. Steel, telephone, automobile, electricity, even aviation, they were all 19th century industries. They were all done by what I would call talented tinkerers. This is the sociologist Daniel Bell. In 1973, he wrote a famous book called The Coming of the Post-Industrial Society. Bell was in part answering Veblen. He said, things have superseded Veblen and his industrial tinkerers. So that here you get a radical change in the sources of innovation in society. And I called it at that time a post-industrial society because it was in relationship to the industrial society. Today, more people call it the information age. Bell thought that this would mean a new technocratic class. But this new class would not come from the factories anymore, and it would not be about the practical knowledge of tinkerers. This new class would come from the university, and it would be all about the theoretical knowledge of intellectuals. Uh, and here I would say, and this is the second dimension of my argument, that a post-industrial society is the codification of theoretical knowledge. Bell claimed that these post-industrial technocrats were developing impressive new intellectual technologies, technologies for producing and interpreting information, for predicting, calculating, modeling, and even controlling society. Bell wrote, the goal of these intellectual technologies is neither more nor less to realize a social alchemist's dream, the dream of ordering the mass society. Cybernetics, the name comes from the Greek word for steersman. Cybernetics, though, may not be at all simple to understand at first glance. This is Norbert Wiener. Actually, it's an actor playing Norbert Wiener in a strange IBM-sponsored intellectual chat show. There's a host conducting a kind of interview with Norbert Wiener. I notice that you call it cybernetics. I've always called it cybernetics. Well, I have been known to do things differently. Cybernetics is really a theory of mathematical relationships in circular systems. The idea is you put something into a system, it will react to your input with its own output. Then you'll respond once again with another input. So causation isn't straightforward. It's circular. And the basis of this circularity is something cybernetics calls feedback. So what do I mean by feedback? Well, when you shoot at a plane and miss, it will give you a certain kind of feedback. And that changes your actions and also the actions of the pilot. Now, if you understand how the feedback operates within this system, you can understand the system and then you can master it, just like you're playing a video game. So my aim improved as I became better able to use the feedback I was getting from the screen. Wiener went on to theorize how feedback circulated in much, much more complex systems. Systems like the economy. He thought things like price signals were really just systems of feedback. And if you understood those in cybernetic terms, you could predict things. And then that means you could act to preserve the system, or you could act to disrupt it. What are the limits of the application of cybernetics to economics or human affairs? The same difficulty applies to all mathematics. If you could define the relationships exactly before you set out and then translate them into mathematical symbols, the mathematics would work perfectly. But it is in choosing those relationships and defining them that we have the problem. Nevertheless, we are going to have to understand ever more complex systems if we are to deal with the future. Without that understanding, there may be no future. It was a theory of mathematical certainty in an uncertain world, a world where nuclear annihilation could come at any moment. It was the obsession of scholars in a wide range of disciplines, and it emboldened a new kind of technocrat. A technocrat who said that you could transcend petty political ideologies so long as you collected the right data and understood how to interpret it. How can we evaluate the contribution made by Wiener to our thinking today? 
well, it would be difficult to overestimate that contribution. The thinking started by Wiener with his concern for feedback systems is likely to have a much greater impact on society than the word games of traditional philosophy. We begin part two of our series, Technocracy Now. On this episode, we will cover the liberal technocrats who wanted to use cybernetics for global stability. But later, we will look at the cybernetic socialism of Allende's Chile. I'm Gordon Caddick, and you are watching Darts and Letters. You can find that on our podcast feed. It is the 65th episode called Technocracy Now! Part 2, or just stay here because the next YouTube video is our podcast. Music